Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar by Data Platform Geeks. Uh, my name is Rohit, and I will be your host for today. Uh, our today's session is on Power BI Write Back with Power Apps, uh, which is going to be delivered by Gilbert, who is an MVP from Australia. And um, Satya Ramesh will be helping us with the moderation of the Q&A and the other technical. So uh, eDominant Systems, a lot of you already know about eDominant Systems and its popular brands. We have uh, SQL Maestros under which we do master classes, uh, offer, we offer advanced SQL training and uh, Microsoft uh, data stack training. Uh, we have the learning kits, the video courses and the hands-on labs. Uh, I will be speaking about all of this a little later. We also have the People Well India where we offer a lot of corporate training and our popular ERP product that is Expand SMERP. So they will be putting down all these links for you to view in the chat window. And uh, we also have Data Platform Geeks, our uh, community of which you all are a part of, where we do all these uh, webinars and in-person events, uh, Pan India. And under Data Platform Geeks, we do our annual summit, uh, which is an international data and analytics conference. Uh, every year, we started off in 2015, uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, and now we are, uh, we are coming up with TPS 2019. Uh, our, our title this time is Empowering Data and AI Transformation. Uh, it will be a regular three-day conference uh, on 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of August. And this time we have, for the first time, we have the pre-cons, uh, three days of pre-cons this time. That is on 19th, 28th, and 21st August. Uh, the summit will be happening at Radisson Blue in Bangalore. Uh, this is a picture from the last year's conference. Uh, you can see more than 1,000 people uh, on the screen uh, coming from 300 plus companies and from over 16 countries. Uh, on the stage, at the backstage, you can see uh, Rohan Kumar, who is, who is the corporate vice president of the Azure Data Group and uh, his Redmond team on the stage. Uh, DPS 2019, like I already mentioned, it will be three days of uh, the summit and three days of the pre-conference training. The, pre, uh, the pre-cons are already announced. I will be talking about it a little later. Uh, at the regular conference, there will be seven tracks, 100 plus sessions delivered by 50 plus international speakers. Uh, and some of the world's best teacher, including MVPs, MCMs, and the Microsoft product team members themselves. Uh, one of the main reasons DPS is so popular because there is 100% learning and 0% marketing. Uh, DPS10.com is our official website. Satya will be putting down the link. And if you have any queries, you can write to contact at DPS10.com or uh, uh, dial the number on your screen. So uh, go ahead and uh, register for DPS 2019. Uh, the one important thing you need to remember is that the pass price for DPS increases every month. So this, uh, the price that was last uh, month uh, has been increased. Uh, uh, it is at a higher cost right now. And uh, the next price will increase on June 1st. So before that, make up your mind and uh, go ahead and register with your team members. Uh, and if you would like the DPS team to invite your company, you can click the button there. Uh, you can visit our DPS uh, website, dps10.com. And on the homepage, you can see these buttons, book now, and invite your company. And we will be sending your company an invite. So why should you really care about the summit? Uh, it's mostly about uh, your uh, reskilling and upskilling if you want to stay uh, up to date with the technologies that has uh, been uh, developing and within uh, all the Microsoft data stack and open source technologies. So this is the place for you. And of course, networking, you will see more than 1,000 people, uh, 1,000 uh, 1, people coming down from 16 plus countries. So it, it is a wonderful way for you to network and you, to make connections for life. Uh, so DPS involves the community. What does that mean? Every every session that you see at DPS uh, is has been voted by the community in all our previous years, and we are following the same this year as well. So every every session that you see has been voted by the community. That is you, and we'll be shortly putting up a DPS 2019 sessions as well for voting. So please uh, do vote. And of course, we have highly curated content and disciplined execution. So next steps, you can evaluate DPS uh, based on our previous uh, sessions and the speakers that we had earlier got. And uh, uh, the speaker announcements for DPS 2019 have begun. And you can check out all of that at uh, dps10.com and you can then register. So the DPG core team, Amit Bansal is our founder and president. Uh, we have Manohar Puna, who is a vice president. And then our regional mentors, Avanish Panchal, Vijay Mishra, Vijay Reddy, Anupama Natarajan, Sandeep Pani, Prince Dostogi, Surbi Agarwal, Sakaram Shinde and Devdatana. These are the regional mentors that help us uh, organize events pan-India. 
So these are the e-dominant teams from Bangalore and Kolkata who uh, help us in all of these initiatives. And we have on your screen, you can see Amit um, Bansil with the e-dominant team and the DPG core team uh, at, at DPS 2018 last year. And special thanks to Microsoft for supporting us in our community initiatives. So if uh, for the people who have joined us for the first time, uh, we also uh, do a lot of in-person events at Microsoft offices, Pan India, we do it in Bangalore, Hyderabad, etc. So you can uh, look out for those and we have a lot of free videos, labs, magazines uh, up on our website and you can access all of them. And if you wish to become a regional mentor, you can uh, fill out the form on our website. And of course, we have started the new meetup model where we, uh, we are collaborating and we can organize meetups in your own organization. So you can check out all of that in the dataplatformgeeks.com website. So if you have any questions beyond this webinar, you can, uh, you can join our Facebook, LinkedIn and our Telegram groups. Uh, we have uh, we have a large community out there as well and uh, you can ask questions or answer questions of the community and yes all our webinars are recorded and uploaded on our youtube Se uh, youtube sql server geeks uh, uh, channel that is our official data platform geeks youtube channel and all our uh, webinars are recorded including this one and will be uploaded soon and we also do a lot of sql server videos which you can access from youtube.com slash sql maestros so without any further delay, let's welcome Gilbert and get started with the webinar. Welcome, Gilbert. Thank you, Rohit. Um, just to confirm that, if someone can just confirm that they can hear me, I don't want to. Yes, <laughs> yes, Gilbert, we can hear you. Awesome. So um, yeah, thanks. So what I want to do today is just walk you guys through using um, Power BI and write back to enable you to write back data into your Pretty much your Power BI data set, which you can then um, report on from there. So, if I could um, just get hold of the sharing so that I could then go through and present, if that's possible, please. Yes, Gilbert, you can share your screen now. Okay, thank you. Uh, da, 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 where are we trying to map on? Why isn't it not? So I just got to find that. That's the one there. Okay. Can you see my screen where I've now just got the slides showing? Yes, perfect. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So, what about, okay. So, just quickly a little bit about myself. Um, I have been, I'm a Power BI Data LA. Analyst consultant working out of the Gold Coast um, in Australia, where I've got uh, different customers from around the world. I'm currently a Microsoft MVP. I also co organize the Queensland Power BI user group, which we have monthly meetings for. If you ever um, out Queensland Way, we're very happy to have speakers as well as people attend our sessions. I've been using Power BI since its inception in Excel 2010 and been uh, using the Microsoft BI stack for the past 12 years. I uh, um, blog pretty regularly. I try to blog at least once or twice a week um, with my uh, from my own website, formu.com forward slash blog. Uh, I contribute to the online Power BI community, trying to assist others with blog posts and answering questions. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, my Twitter handle is at Gilbert Q, which is a lot shorter than trying to put my whole surname in there. So a quick uh, session overview of what we're going to cover today. So what I'm just going to do is a quick recap on Power BI and what is Power Apps and, and where they fit. Then I'm going to go and show you how to build a Power App and, and the details around that. Then I'll go and show you how to build a, a Power BI report integrating the Power App into the Power BI report. Lots of um, Power BI power things being spoken about here. Then I'll show you how to um, update data within your Power BI report, which is the write back a portion of the report, and then be able to just show you how that um, refresh happens. So you can actually see once you've written something back, how it then is populated back into the reports. And then if there are any questions, um, just please let, let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So, quick overview of what is Power BI. So Power BI is Microsoft's um, data and analytics tool, which they now using and um, which is basically for data analysts and, and business users to have an easy way to get data from multiple sources and multiple different locations all into 
a model which then facilitates easy reporting as well as insights into your data. As we know currently, there's a, a lot of organizations that have had data for a long time and now they want to see how they can leverage their data within the organization. And this is where Power BI comes in to facilitate that. Then um, what is Power Apps? So Power Apps has actually been around for quite a while, it's just not say the, the shiny um, thing that Microsoft is, has been punting, but that is, that is changing as it evolves. And what Power App is, is a no-code, low-code solution that allows you to create an application, which you can all create in the, in the web, which I'll show you shortly, and allows you to then distribute this potentially to users in your organization to either view data or capture data very easily where it's using the cloud platform. So in terms of time to deliver and create um, an app is very quick and very easy to, to get that working. So in terms of what I'm gonna be showing today, this is the, one of the last slides I think I'll show, is I'm gonna show you how to build the Power, Power App, then building the Power BI report, updating the data within the Power App and the Power BI report and then watch, show you how the refresh happens, just configure that and show you how that can happen where it's writing back um, into your report. Are there any questions so far with regards to that? Just before I uh, continue, looks all good. Okay, so what I have here is uh, Microsoft Power Apps. This is what it looks like by default when you log in. And in terms of getting there, there's multiple ways to get there. But what I typically do is I use the top left button. If I click on all apps to show all the apps that are available to me, you can see that, for instance, Excel Flow Forms. And one of the ones further down is Power Apps. So what I want to show you first is I currently have some data stored in my OneDrive for Business folder. So typically the data that you want to write back to or from has to be you know, stored somewhere. So it could be a SQL database. In this example, I'm going to be using a, an Excel file where I've, I've made up some data. And, and as you can see now, I'm just syncing this via OneDrive for Business through to my local machine. But this obviously exists in, in OneDrive for Business online. So if I have to open this up just to show you what this looks like, very quickly, just so you can understand, is I've got a year, a name, a salary, and a bonus. And this Power Apps ID is something that gets generated, which I'll explain through shortly on um, the Power BI, sorry, the Power Apps. So what happens is, is when you start in, in Power Apps, what you got here is um, your home, your learn, your apps, if you want to create something, data, business logic and solutions. So there's, as with Microsoft things, there's more than one way to do something. But what you can use, you can create an, uh, a Canvas app from blank, a model driven app, which is from um, CDS, start from data and as well as uh, training, just, just details on training. So what I suggest doing is the easiest way to do this is, is, is to have your data ready and then start from data. And I'll, I'll show you shortly why, why this makes it a lot easier. So when I say start from data, it just comes up giving me an explanation. And what you'll see here, the key three things that I want to highlight over here is that it will generate three screens automatically for you. Whilst if you have to create it from blank, you have to manually create these three screens and stitch them all together, which you can most definitely do. But um, I like to try and work smarter where if I don't have to stitch them together and something will do it for me. Then, then that's the way I'll go. So what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to click on create. And what that's going to do is it's going to open another window and should hopefully very really quickly bring that up. So now what you can see, it looks like you've definitely got new open account connections and flows. And here you can say you want to start with your data. And what it has here is it's got the common data service, one draft for business, et cetera. So what I suggest doing again is if you actually click on the right hand side, what I can do is can show you the connections that you've really got pre-established. As you can see over here, I've already um, set up a whole lot of connections. If I wanted to create a new one, you can see over here, it's got the little um, almost premium icon, which are different app plans. And as you can see, there's a whole host of connections that you can use. So in my example, I want to go to my OneDrive for Business folder, which is 
going to connect through. And as you, if you notice, I had the presentations folder before. So I'm clicking through there. I'm going to GPS 2019. So this, this over here is basically connecting to the same level as there. And then I click on salary data. So one of the things you have to do when you are um, wanting to say, for instance, bring in Excel files, is you have to have your data defined in a table within Excel. So if it's just a, a sheet that's sitting there, it actually won't pop up in here. So in this example, I've already given my table name of salary, so I can click on that, and then I can click Connect. So now what happens is it's actually going through, and as you can see here, it's building these three apps for me. And it's pretty quick. And the great thing it does, is, which I was talking to earlier, is I now have a browse screen, a detail screen, and an edit screen. And what it's done is it's actually created those screens for me and stitched them all together in terms of just how they map and, and, and how they work. So as you can see over here on Power Apps, it's all web-based. It's got a lot of our familiar things where we can click on File. It's got the Home button with a whole lot of options depending on what you selected. There's Insert, so if you want to insert new screens, buttons, text controls, etc. There's a whole lot of functionality which I'm not going to cover today because it's, it's not the agenda. Data sources, collections, you know, you got actions and a lot of this is, is familiar if you've been using Power Query. Some of it is, is pretty familiar. One of the great things you can also do when you're building this app is you can actually click on the preview the app button. And what this will actually do is whatever screen you're on, it will start previewing from there. So let me just go back here. If I go to my browse screen and let me just play it from there, you can now see it brings up this browse screen and, and it's as, as if I'm using the app on my phone or mobile device. So I can actually click through and over here it will um, show me the information. I can either delete it or I can edit it. And if I edit it, I can then click submit. So what I want to show you here is on my browse screen currently, I don't have any more details. I've just got the person's name and as you can see over here, there's uh, not a lot of detail. So now the great thing is, is if you actually click on any item on the left, it will actually show you which portion you're on. So now what I want to do is I actually want to say, okay, if I go to my browse screen, as you can see, there's a title, there's subtitle one. So what I'm going to do is just because I like to work as smart as I'm just going to say, okay, I want to copy this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this. So now what you'll see is, Instantaneous, it looks like I'm pasting that uh, information, but now you can see obviously I've duplicated the year. So on the right hand side here, you can see there's all the properties. And what you have over here is if I click under advanced, it's got what will happen on the select off, but the text is basically telling me what item. So as you can see there, it says this dot here. So what I can do is I can change this and then go this dot. And what it does is then Telesense picks that up and it now says, so now as you can see over here, this is now giving me the bonus um, value that I have there. So I could also potentially come in here and put in a tool tip. What if I can just get my spelling right, bonus value, which then should allow me if I hover over that when it's in the full edit mode for, for that to happen. Another thing I can also do is, because I know that this is a, a number value, I can actually format this text also. So if I just go to my little run sheet and go back here, I can then take that and I can do that. Now what you can see is these have all, all the values have now changed to actually show me a dollar amount and to show that it's a currency value. So now what I could do is I'm like, okay, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with the colors, let me just make sure it works. I can now run this, edit it, and for instance, I come in to here, I can say, okay, I want this salary, I decide, I want an increase, a big increase, and I'm just gonna increase it. So now what it's doing is it's actually writing that back to the, um, the Excel spreadsheet. So if I just come back here now, and hopefully it's syncing as it should, you can now see that that value there has just um, increased to show what I've done. And what this Power F Power D does is it just allows a way to uniquely identify the rows when you're editing in the background, and um, and get that get that all working. So now, once I'm happy 
with my Power App, and I'm like, right, everything looks good. I can then click on File, and then I can go under App Settings here. It says App and Icon, and what I can do if I wanted to do, I could say, okay, let's give it a different color, let's give it a different icon. You got some options if you want to change the screen size, etc. Some more advanced features. Then what I can do is then I can actually click Save. So when I want to save it, I want to save it to the cloud because that's where it's going to operate from. And I'm going to give this a, uh, the name I want to save it is I'm going to call it DPS 2019. And I'm going to click Save. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long. So now, as you can see, it's been saved and, and I've got it saved in my, um, in my tenants, are there are there any questions, or should I just wait for the questions at the end, and then I guess I uh, can just take it from there. Probably just take the the Q and A questions at the end. Allow for some more time. Okay, so now I have got the the Power App saved. I know how that right back to Excel. The next section, the next piece is okay. Now, how do I integrate this Power App with a Power BI report and get it all working and refreshing? So the next thing I need to do is to open up Power BI Desktop. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. I was, uh, okay, it's busy coming up. Obviously, it's, it's late in the evening here in Australia, so it's taken a while to open up. So the first thing I want to do is I now want to want to get data. I want to bring in this um, Excel spreadsheet so that I can report on it, as well as show um, how to do the right backs. The first thing I want to do is I want to get my data. And the way I've, I've structured it is I'll say I want to get this data from a folder. So what I'm going to do is, even though it's an Excel file, I, I prefer connecting to a folder so it allows me more flexibility when I'm working on data later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my URL and I'm going to paste it in there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I always like to, when I'm edit, um, bringing in data, I always like to edit it first to make sure it's in the shape and the format and everything that I need. So as you can see over here, in my folder, I have got these two files. So what I actually want to do is one of the ways I found if that's the file I always want to keep with that name, I actually just go text filters and equals. So what that will then do is will always will filter to show me that, that Excel spreadsheet. Next, what I can do is I can just click on the binary, which is going to show me what is in the actual Excel file. And what I want is the salary table, which is the one that I connected to earlier in Power App. So I'm going to click on table. And as you can see, this is now brought the data through. You can see the same amount reflected there. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shaping here and say, okay, I don't need that Power Apps column because it's of no value to me. I also want the bonuses itself being null. I actually rather want to see a zero in my reporting. It just makes it easier for me so I can find those items. And what I'm finally going to do is I'm just going to rename this to salary. So just done a little bit of shaping in the applied steps. I'm going to um, assume that most people have, you know, have seen, oh God, let me just fix this, have seen Power BI before and understand how it all works. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click close and apply, which is then gonna bring these changes through. Should hopefully happen pretty quick. Perfect. So now what I just quickly want to do is on the year, I just want to go over here, say do not summarize. Next, what I want to do is I obviously want to visualize this data and see this data. So because this obviously is a demo, I just want to make it nice and easy to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the year, the name, the salary, and the bonus. And what I'll quickly do is let's just Typically, I would create measures and all of that to, to make it a bit more robust. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to format both of these as uh, 
currency. And now, as you can see, I now have those values in my table where I can see what everyone's got for the different years. Funnily enough, year was formatted as a decimal number. Let's just make that a whole number. Just so it, it ties up with the way we expect things to see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to save this and what I'll do for now is I'm actually just going to save it over here. So now I have got my Power BI report brought in. I've got all the information and the easiest way to do this, there's two ways to do it. One way you can do it is now I want to bring in my Power App into my Power BI report so that I can actually go in and use the Power BI so the Power App within my report to enable the right back. There's two ways of doing it. You can either do it from importing it from uh, the marketplace. So if I go to the marketplace and I search for Power App and search, I can then add it from here and it's successfully imported. When you go to the Power BI service, that is actually also there by default. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Power App. Uh, custom visual, let's just make it a bit bigger so it's a bit easier to use. And in order to use it as it shows you here, you can either use an existing app or create one, but one of the key things you need to do is you need to add a field, any field to this. And now what it does is it starts off and says, oh, okay, now that you've added a field, would you like to create or edit? It says you, you shouldn't ideally do this from desktop, but you can. So what I can do is I'm gonna say, okay. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, I want to choose an app and as you can see the integration because it knows who I am I'm saying oh, I want to add my DPS 2019 app that I've just created it's asking me to sign in so let me just sign in quickly didn't ask me earlier but that's all good give me one sec and of course, it's going to ask for, give me one second. It's a, uh, let me do multi-factor authentication. I am um, just letting it run. It should go through unless it's going to give me a hard time. Maybe third time lucky if you just bear with me, please. There you go. Hopefully that should take another second or two. Awesome. So now as you can see, I have got the app, the same Power BI app running um, on my, my desktop here. So what I could do is if I wanted to, I could resize it, make it so it fits nice, nicely. And then obviously I could always go change the app and, and modify it so it looks a lot better. So now that I'm happy with my Power BI report, and I've got the information here. What I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna publish this up. So I'm gonna publish this to my presentation workspace. And this one I'll publish it as it is obviously into the, the Power BI service. So if I just go back here, um, I can now open up the report and as you can see, it's going to connect. And once again, all of these their settings and permissions that can will be managed in terms of who can share, who can see what, and who can update things. So one of the things now, just to show you, is if I go into this particular item here and I'll say, okay, well, you know, I'll be working really hard. I think I deserve a bonus. And I increase that, which I'm you know, I'm the boss, so I've decided, right, I think I need to earn more money. As you can see over here now, this is updated here, but currently in this data model, that's not updated there. If you go, if you can see, if I just sort it by name, you can see that's still sitting at a thousand. So one of the things I need to do is I need to be able to configure the gateway to look back at the same Excel file. So what I can then do is if I go into manage gateways, I now have got this already pre-configured. 
And what it is, is looking at that same folder that I used. If I show you that folder there, and I'll go in here and click on data sources, you can see that both are looking at the same, at the same location. So, so now that I've set that up, so what that means is, is when I'm, when I'm either writing back from Power Apps to the Excel file or reading from Power BI Desktop, they're both actually looking at, at the same source. So what I can then do, I can then go to my settings where what I need to do is configure the data set to use the gateway when I refresh. So what I can do here, as you can see, it's all set up and running. So I can say, okay, map through to that one and click apply and often find you just got to go back the data set credentials are already done there's no parameters and if i wanted to i could create a scheduled refresh for this so now what i can do is if i go back through to my data sets and i click on refresh now and i'll go back to my report what should happen once the refresh is complete, which should take a few seconds, this currently still is showing a thousand because it's the cache of the report. If I click on refresh, you can now see that that is now a million. So now what I've enabled is I've enabled the, within my reports, I've enabled me to make a change to the existing item. So I could say, okay, well, you know, you might've been working hard, but you haven't been working smart. So you're not gonna get a good salary and your bonus is just going to be i'm going to be 10. and i can then actually save that which now what i'm doing is i'm writing doing the write back from power apps to the to the actual report i can then see when i go on here my bonus values of 10 and if i come back in here and refresh this data which is now going to read back out of the excel file and i'll click on refresh I can now see that that has changed from, from 77 to 10. So that, that works really well. And it, you know you can obviously make it really seamless for the end users in terms of how they view and, and, and update and, and work with all this data. What I also wanted to show was, I just want to double check here, is one where I should still have it. Up and running should be, I think it's this one. That's not that one. So just give me a sec. It might be. So what I wanted to show you here is this is one where I have done a bit more work and just created so it looks a little different and a little bit easier to use in terms of, of how it all works. And what I've done here is I've got my a Power BI report where I could particularly filter certain things if I wanted to. And what I have over here, it looks slightly small, but obviously again, it's all reporting for the same Excel spreadsheet. And what I've done, if I just expand that you, to make it look a bit better, is I've just formatted the actual report so that it looks a bit better. It's got the, um, you know, who it is, the salary, the year, etc. And once again, I could go into that screen and update these items, etc. And I think something's gone over here. So, oh, okay. So, what it, so one of the things I, I did want to show, but this the connection's obviously expired, is you can then also integrate um, Microsoft Flow using APIs to actually have it so that the user doesn't have to manually go to the bottom left and click refresh now you could just have a button that they could click on which will then refresh the one thing to remember with that is is if you're using power bi pro you can only refresh it eight times a day so you just got to be aware of when you're handling these refreshes where and how you're managing the data because another way you could work around this is what i learned from chuck from the, the power bi team is if you're doing a direct query to a database that your model is running off of well then there's no actual um refreshing of the data because it's a direct query as they get written back it can then uh get written out and that's uh pretty much i've run through this fairly quickly um and that's pretty much how i have 
gone through and just demonstrated how to build the app in using the Power BI app, building the Power BI report um, and integrating the two and updating the data with the Power app and then watching the refresh happen. So when you write something back to Excel file, you can then see that uh, happening in the report. And that's pretty much it. Are there any uh, questions with regards to that? That anyone has? The law makes sense. If, uh, yeah, well, I guess if there's not any other questions or things you'd like to know, whether it's about um, Power BI, Microsoft Flow, or, or Power Apps, um, thanks, thanks for your, thanks for your time. Uh, yes, Gilbert, I think I'm seeing a few questions in the chat window. Uh, sure. So uh, let, let the, uh, uh, let the uh, community post more questions. Meanwhile, I have a few slides to show uh, in minutes, and uh, then you can take your questions. I hope that's all right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So like I was mentioning earlier, if you have any questions beyond this webinar, you can always uh, write on our Facebook, LinkedIn and Telegram groups. Uh, Satya has already put down those links, so please do join them. And uh, SQL Maestro's Learning Solutions, we have uh, the master classes which we had re uh, concluded recently. And it was a phenomenal success. We had uh, uh, international experts delivering uh, eight hour demo based online classes on SSRS, Power BI, machine learning, and whatnot. So you can still show your interest, and we will be coming up with more master classes later on. You can visit sequelmasters.com for that. And we have uh, the, the famous uh, performance tuning course by Amit Bansal, which is coming out in a video course format, video format, and it will be releasing soon. But you can register yourself right away to avail uh, the discounts available. Uh, we have the unique uh, hands-on labs, which are the unique way of learning. And you can, since you're DPG members, you can access some of the demos for free. You can visit our, our data platform Geeks website. And we have the learning kits, uh, uh, which is again, uh, based on the SQL Server Performance Tuning course by Amit Bansal. And if you are in need of SQL Server help, you can always write to us. Our official uh, website is sqlmaestros.com and you can write to us at contact at sqlmaestros.com. And the uh, pre-cons for Data Platform Summit, it'll uh, spread across three days. Uh, we have 16 pre-cons by uh, 12 uh, experts, uh, MVPs and, uh, and uh, speakers from Microsoft. Uh, we have Peter Myers, Shiva Arinath, Reed Heavens, Denny Cherry, John Q. Martin, and uh, Ginger Grant, and Joey, and Shiva Arinath, who's from Microsoft, and Sandy too. So you can go ahead and pick your uh, uh, pre-con that you want to attend. Pre-cons are full-day classroom trainings that will uh, go on from nine to five deep dive. So you can select your classes and you can register yourself right away. Like I said, uh, the price pass prices increase from June 1st. So uh, that's it from me. And uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter at the SQL Server Geeks is our Twitter handle. And the webinar uh, is recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube. And uh, uh, that's it from me. Uh, so once again, thanks. Thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Gilbert, for a wonderful session. So let's see if we have any more questions. Uh, nothing on the Q&A panel. So I think the chat window has a couple of questions. Sure. Okay. Uh, 
okay that question has been answered so uh, gilbert i think uh, that's it from us as well i think there are no questions sure. as of now so uh, in case the uh, attendees write any questions to us i will definitely forward it to you and then you can uh, review yeah. that awesome all right all right gilbert thanks a lot once again for joining thank us you. for a wonderful webinar thank you thank you have thank a great you. day see ya bye, bye.